Americans are holding off on buying homes. Sales of existing homes fell last month to the slowest pace since January. Inventory pretty scarce as well with a historic low number of homes on the market. But this week, the average 30 year mortgage rate ended up slipping to its lowest level in a month as well. Rogers Healy is founder of Rogers Healy and Associates Real Estate, the largest independent real estate firm in North Texas. And he joins us this morning to talk all about the state of real estate. So thank and you. Barbie and Barbie. Yeah, we you are Ken. I, yeah, listen, I've never <laughs> been a, 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 in a Barbie reference before, so it's a great day. We're so. happy to have you here on thank such you. a momentous weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly it's the biggest weekend of my entire life with Barbie coming out. <laughs> I love it. And why don't we talk about this housing market? Because not as hot as the Barbie trends right now. You know, it's all relative and especially in a place like Let's Dallas where look, here, here's the thing. I, I've, I've had a successful career in real estate because I don't get accused of overthinking. And you know, okay. the, the market normally slows down this time of year because it's hotter than hell in Dallas. And yeah. I think when you have 110 degree temperatures, the last thing people want to go do is get out of their house and go look at other homes. So I think that logic continues to control our market. But yeah, interest rates continue to maybe decrease. But we live in Dallas, Texas, which on paper is the best real estate city in the potential world. Mm. So we're, we're in a good place. That's very good to know. And are we still considered affordable here in North Texas? There's so many people coming. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, again, it's all relative. I think that, you know, five years ago, Dallas was never in the same conversation as Los Angeles or Miami or Chicago or New York City with, with home prices. It was normally in places like Cincinnati, like Tampa, like Nashville, Atlanta, et cetera. So I think we've seen our city all of a sudden just become you know, the new it place. So I think because of that, there's, there's still sticker shop to people that are originally from here. We're an affordable house, you know, five years ago was 300,000, maybe now it's 450. But moving here from the coast or from the Northeast, it's a really, really good deal. So I think we continue to see an influx of, you know, sticker shock, but you know, the market is still secure. And what about inventory? What are you seeing? You know, it's the same thing. I, you know, I got into real estate when I was in college and I noticed the trends really early on that it's always really busy late spring, early summer. And the reason being is that people normally graduate college, their lease is up, they go rent a house, their lease is up, a year later they buy their first home. So those trends kind of start to set. But again, it's the summertime and it's the summertime in Dallas, Texas where the last 45 days have been historically normal. And I think people aren't used to that because COVID kind of shifted things around. But what's happening now is we're getting a more stable market across the board. And because of that, people, I think, are going to be able to breathe a little bit easier. It's the ebbs and flows of yeah. everything in life. Yeah. Am I right? You know, it's it, real estate. Honestly, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, but, you know, for some reason, we've, we found a way to, to found success. Absolutely. So, of course, Austin, the state house, I mean, they're on the verge of, of granting property tax relief um, pending the governor's signature at this point, I believe. Sure. So. Where does that stand and what should homeowners and potential future homeowners need to know about this? Yeah, look, I, I hate to break it to you guys, but it's not going to change things that much. Okay. I, I think if there's an alteration, it's not going to be by a significant amount. And again, real estate fuels the economy. It fuels our state. There's a reason that people want to be homeowners in the great city like Dallas, Texas. But I, I think it at best on average, I think a homeowner might save a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per year, which probably is not going to move the needle that much. Even in, even in entry level locations. Here's my question. So yes. if there's anybody out there that's maybe sitting on selling their home, they're not sure in, in their property value is increasing. I mean, should they sit or should, should they sell? Yeah, you're probably sitting at home in your bathrobe right now wondering, what, <laughs> what do I do? But here's the thing. When you sell at an all time high, guess what? You're buying it at an all time high. Mm. So it's all relative. And I think that you know people continue to have this mystery in their head. What do I do? Look, move because you want to move, right? And if the byproduct is you make money when you exit, that's a great thing. But again, you, people don't realize when you're selling at an all time high, you're buying at an all time high. And that to me makes it kind of difficult to justify just moving to make a quick dollar. I get it. All right, Rogers, thank you. Appreciate all your time this morning and for breaking that down for us. And of you're course, welcome. for more, you can go to rogershealy.com.